I'm over here. I saved us a table. Hey, how are you? Sit down. We have a lot of information to go over today. I got you your usual drink. I hope that's okay. Oh, good. I know we've met a few times and your drink order hasn't deviated. I was pretty confident in my choice. Did you enjoy your game with Charlotte and her friends after the events committee meeting wrapped up today? Good. I'm glad you're making so many friends. It's nice to see you flourish so much. It's only been a few weeks since you arrived in Ashwood. And the stairs are already starting to diminish. Though, I secretly suspect that might be a little bit of Charlotte's doing. She's very persuasive when she wants to be. On the note of your new friends, have you seen Shay since the incident? You haven't? Not at all? What? Yeah, that's so bizarre. I wonder if she went home. I mean, I can't imagine what she must be feeling. Meeting your housemate and then immediately rotting their closet door to dust. That can't be easy to deal with. At least the door was replaced quickly, though. I mean, that's a huge positive for you. Especially now that you have all of those committee (laughs) t-shirts. Seriously, I think they gave you enough shirts and swag to last you through the semester. Oh, yes. Okay, so after you left the meeting today, the subcommittee head started to divvy out the task for the fall semester events. It was an excellent meeting. I wrote so many notes. We have some exciting events coming up. The Autumn Harvest event is especially fun. And I am really happy that you're on the subcommittee with me. There is so much history and culture in the celebration. Plus, that event has the absolute best attractions. We have such a good team this year, too, now that you've joined us, Sparks. So it's sure to be a huge success. Oh, do you not like the nickname? Uh, I can think of something else if you don't. I just, you know, I, I think you're just a spark right now. It works because it calls back to your fire abilities, while also implying that you're just getting started with your adventure here. I, but I wrote down a few other options for you, too, if you didn't like that one. Um, how do you feel about Ember? Um, maybe Combustion or Flamio? Yes, all the nicknames have to do with fire. I thought it was kind of clever. I mean, you are a fire mage. It really only makes sense. Besides, we've been spending quite a bit of time together in meetings at the events committee. And I'd like to consider us friends now. Friends give each other nicknames. And I don't know, I guess I thought maybe it would help you feel a bit more comfortable with your newfound abilities if the nickname that I gave you was flavored around them. You do like sparks? Oh, good! 
that was one that I already highlighted as a possibility. I think it's the cutest option I came up with so far. Well, yeah. You're cute, so you deserve a cute name. It's just logic. But on that note, have you been successful in casting a spell yet? Hey. Hey, it's okay. You're brand new to everything here. You didn't even know you had Thom until a few weeks ago. The rest of us, we grew up with it. It's really unfair to compare yourself. Right. What you can do now is just focus on learning as much as you can about this new life. And until then, I'll help you as best I can. I promise. Now, for today's lesson, we're going to actually talk about Thom and affinities. This is all foundation-level information, so we'll take our time going over it. If something isn't making sense, please let me know. I'm here to help you, and that includes answering any questions that you might have. All right? Okay, well, I went ahead and made a few notes for you to refer to during the lesson. They are yours, so feel free to write on them or highlight them or whatever you want, okay? Do you need to borrow a pen? (laughs) I thought you might. I brought you some options. I love these pens, and they come in so many different colors. I can give you a few if you want to color code your notes. Oh, are you sure only one's okay? Well, if you insist, I guess. <laughs> uh, maybe next time we'll talk about different note-taking strategies. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is that Thom is what gives us our abilities. I guess you would probably call it magic where you're from. That's actually a really great question. Okay, so magic means something that's supernatural. Our abilities aren't supernatural, though. In order for something to be supernatural, it has to be able to defy understanding. We understand where our abilities come from. We understand the nature of them. They came from the Fae. That's why people with thumb are called Fae-touched here. We've quite literally been touched by the Fae. No, no, it it doesn't mean that a Fae came up and physically touched you. But the Fae left fingerprints on the world all around us. They helped to create the world into what it is now. It only makes sense that little bits of them would remain. Our thumb comes from those tiny pieces the Fae left behind. You've been Fae-touched since you were born. You've always had Thom, even if you never accessed it before. Hopefully, they already explained the veil to you. I mean, they must have when they gave you the choice to stay in Ashwood and learn your abilities, or... Be sent home with your memories modified of the experience here. Basically, the veil is where we are now. We aren't in the mortal plane, but we also aren't in fairy either. Oh, a uh, fairy is where the fae live. Though the Fae and the Veil may be something for us to get into on another day. I don't want to overwhelm you with too many topics. 
We are only human, and therefore we are only able to focus for so long, after all. So the long story short is that the veil has a way of amplifying your thumb. Once you learn how to control it here, you'll be able to control it outside of Ashwood too. It may still be weaker by comparison, though. Now, there are several different schools of thumb. You could have a permanent manifestation of your abilities, like an empath or a telepath. People in this specific group have their thumb dedicated to that singular ability. Casting spells is typically very difficult for them. They just don't have a lot of thumb left to spare because their primary affinity is eating it up. Then you have the mages, like you and me. We can cast spells with the help of spell circles, and sometimes even without them. So, for example, um, I'm an air affinity. That means my magic is rooted in air. I can create small breezes, for example, without making a spell circle. But if I want to teleport, an ability unique to air affinities, then I would need to make a spell circle. Yes, I can make them very quickly. (laughs) Yeah, spells are typically rooted in an element or a part of nature. Think of it almost like an ingredient for a spell. Based on your aura, you're a fire affinity. And fire affinities are extremely versatile. They make excellent healers, and they have a unique ability to open gateways in the veil. Which, honestly, might be why you were able to get through the wards. My theory is that you somehow unconsciously cast a spell. Yeah, so technically you can cast larger magic without a spell circle. It's just not advisable. You're likely to have it blow up in your face without something to focus the spell. Which, I guess, will bring us to the last bit for today. If you do try to cast a spell without a circle or if you try to cast a spell of a different affinity type, well, you're basically taking a chance with chaos. Chaos is just what it sounds like. Our abilities are built on rules and structure. The Fae love rules. It's like their whole thing. So, because our thumb comes from the Fae, it also follows a set of rules. Trying to cast a spell from another affinity is one of those rules. So, because you are a fire mage, you can't naturally cast things like teleportation magic like I can as an air mage. If you did try to cast a teleportation spell, well you would be taking your chance with chaos. Sometimes nothing happens. Sometimes it could be that something minor goes wrong. In the example of teleportation, maybe it just means you don't end up where you're planning. Sometimes, though, it's much, much worse. That's the nature of chaos. It's the opposite of rules. It's total unpredictability. And because of that, you really, really don't want to mess with it. Anyways, I think maybe that's a good stopping point for today. 
I've given you a lot of information, so I'll let you go ahead and ruminate on all of that before we move on to anything else. (laughs) Yeah, actually, I do have to get going. I have cheerleading practice tonight. We have a huge game coming up and we're adding a couple of new routines this year. I'm sorry that I can't stay longer and chat a bit more. But I'll still see you at the events committee meeting on Tuesday, right? Oh, excellent. Okay, I'll save you a seat then. Well, see you later, Sparks. (laughs) And do not forget to review those notes.